In this video, we're going to talk about graphs which are two chromatic. And those are graphs which can be colored using two colors. Now, we're going to begin with the following basic fact. Every tree with at least two vertices is two chromatic. Recall that a tree is a connected acyclic graph. Now, to begin the proof, we'll take T to be a tree with at least two vertices. Because it's connected and there are at least two vertices, we know that we'll need at least two colors to color this tree. Now, our goal is to show that we can do it in two colors. Now, let V be any vertex of the tree and consider the tree to be rooted at V. To see what I mean by rooting a tree at a vertex, let's draw an example tree. So I'll draw a bunch of vertices and edges to form a tree in green here. And now I'll pick out a vertex V. You can imagine redrawing this graph so that you can see it as being rooted at V. Visually, you can think about holding onto the vertex V and letting the rest of everything else dangle below. So now we can really think about our tree in terms of V and then what's below it and then what's below it, and we can sort of layer our tree in levels. Now let's let V be colored with color one, and I'll use blue to represent this. And next we can say, let's take a look at all of the neighbors of V and color them with color two, and I'll use red to represent this. Next we can just move lower down the tree and say, let's take a look at all of the neighbors of the vertices which were colored red and make sure they get colored blue and we can continue this process. So now I've layered this tree so that it's colored blue, red, blue, red. If you think about what I've done here, I've really colored all of the vertices blue that belong to the set X, where X is the set of vertices whose distance from V is even. And we've colored all of the vertices red that belong to the set Y, where Y is the set of vertices of the tree whose distance from our special vertex V is odd. Now it's pretty straightforward to see that in a tree, there is a unique path between any pair of vertices. If there wasn't a unique path between any given pair of vertices, then we would wind up with cycles. So now we have it such that every path in our tree alternates colors from red to blue to red to blue, etc. And this means that there is no two adjacent vertices which are assigned the same color. In other words, we've colored the tree using just two colors. So we now know that the chromatic number of the tree is two. So we've talked about the idea that if we have a tree, then the chromatic number is two. And we might ask, what about the converse? The converse would say that if the chromatic number is two, then we have a tree. Is this true? Well, no, it's not true. And for example, you could take the four cycle, which we know can be colored in two colors. In fact, any cycle of even length is colorable in two colors. So it's not true that if you have chromatic number two that it must be a tree. But you may have noticed in the proof that we just saw that a tree is in fact bipartite. And this turns out to be the characterization of what makes the chromatic number equal to two. So we have the following theorem. The chromatic number of a graph is equal to two if and only if the graph is bipartite. We've seen in a previous video that a graph is bipartite if and only if it has no odd cycle. If you need a reminder, then click here and check out the video. We're going to use this fact as we proceed through the proof. So let's start by thinking about the first direction. Here we aim to show that if the chromatic number equals two, then the graph is bipartite. And we're going to do this by proving the contrapositive so the contrapositive of this statement says that if the graph is not bipartite, then the chromatic number is bigger than two. In order to prove this statement, let's take a graph which is not bipartite. But then, because of the characterization we've previously seen of bipartite graphs, we know that this means the graph must have an odd cycle. Now, the chromatic number of G is going to be at least as big as the chromatic number of that odd cycle which we know is equal to three. This is because we're using the fact that if you have a subgraph, then the chromatic number of your whole graph must be at least as big as the chromatic number of the subgraph. In this case, the subgraph is the odd cycle. Now let's look at the other direction. So here we aim to show that if a graph is bipartite, 
then the chromatic number is equal to 2. So let's take a bipartite graph. But then we know by definition that we can write down its vertex set as x union y, where every edge in the graph is of the form xy, where x belongs to the set x and y belongs to the set y. That's just the definition of being bipartite. But then, of course, we can color all of the vertices in the set x, color 1, and all of the vertices in the set y, color 2. And we have a 2 coloring, and so we can say that the chromatic number is equal to 2. And now we're finished the proof. So you should remember this as a fairly intuitive fact, that a graph which has chromatic number 2 is bipartite, and if a graph is bipartite, then of course it can be colored in two colors.